Being a good commander player isn't really about winning, although that is part of it. Memorable games of commander are stories that everyone at the table gets to participate in. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the expectations people have in 2024, and how you can help to create games everyone will enjoy. Let's start with the elephant in the room, Power Level. A fun game of commander only happens when each player gets to meaningfully participate. And that only happens when all the decks are operating on similar axes or similar power levels. When you sit down at a table, it's important to be open with the other players about the power level of the game you are about to play, which is a lot easier said than done. In a traditional competitive magic environment, these problems are already solved for you because there is a format that already determines which cards we can use. Commander, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, does not have these rules, unless you want to play CEDH. So we need to figure them out each time we sit down at a table. Now there are some tools to help you with this, like mtg.cardsrealm.com, but this tool does not figure in synergies, so it's not anywhere near foolproof. Aside from telling you how many expensive format staples you have in your deck, you can't really tell how your deck works. Despite all that, it can still end up being fairly useful, because just using a handful of staples can shift the power level of a deck dramatically. My other major gripe with these scales is that they all tend to shift everything to the 6 plus power range. Why even use a 10 point scale if 1 through 5 is never used? I'd start with putting most of the precons in a 2 to 3 power range, because they're more or less the baseline these days leaving absolute piles to hold the number ones. What's that? Going from there, we can begin to fix the problem of everyone calling their deck a 7. But I think a better approach would be something along the lines of asking people, on what turn does your deck win if left unchecked? Which I know isn't much easier to pinpoint with all the factors included. But it does get to the heart of what people are actually asking you when they ask you what your deck's power level is. Another accurate way to communicate this, rather than assigning a number to the deck, is to tell people what you are actually trying to do. Then name some of the more powerful cards in your deck. Are you playing Moxes, Dual Lands, Rhystic Study, Free Spells, Smothering Tide? You know, some of those big powerhouse staples. Like I said before, the point of these games isn't just to win. We want to make sure everyone walks away having had a good time. Don't be that guy. Or gal. There are a handful of effects and deck archetypes that are despised by the community at large. And I would discourage you from building them as your first decks, or even playing them unless you get the go-ahead from your table. AKA, bring them with you, but make sure you have some other decks too. Plenty of players, myself included, don't mind playing against these most of the time, but you have to feel it out for yourself. In a little bit of a particular order, here they are from worst the least worst. Mass land destruction. This means playing spells like Armageddon or Obliterate to destroy all of the lands in play. Most decks are not equipped to deal with this, or are even playing around this at all. And so, if it comes out of nowhere, the game becomes unplayable for most of the people at the table. So you might be thinking to yourself, Great! They'll never see it coming! I'm definitely gonna win! Well, congratulations. You just brought a gun to a knife fight. Interaction and participating meaningfully in a game is what makes it fun for people. This removes that entirely for most players. Killing the fun. I just love killing. Stacks. Named after the card Smokestack, these decks aim to create miserable conditions and remove most permanents and options from the rest of the table. These types of decks just drain the fun out of games. People build their decks because they want to do the thing and you are stopping them from doing the thing. At more competitive tables, this is a totally viable strategy. But make sure folks are ready for this experience before you start shuffling it up. Super Friends, a deck whose whole goal is to cast a ton of Planeswalkers. Besides just taking forever to take their turns, these decks usually function in one of two ways. Either they put a Planeswalker on the board and it gets attacked down immediately, and they never get a foothold on the game, or they are extremely oppressive and unfun for everyone but the pilot. I personally think the former is the larger of these offenses. Turns taking too long can really drag down the 
whole experience for everyone involved and turn the vibe so people are really disengaged with the game. Infinite Combo. These decks are designed to go from zero to winning the game in a single sequence. That escalated quickly. This is the opposite of interaction. This one annoys me more than any of the others I've mentioned, but it's generally more socially acceptable at most tables. I come to Commander from some more competitive formats, where the card pool is placing restrictions on what we can do. When you enter a tournament, you should have a very clear idea of what is possible in the format, and you bring, or don't bring, tools to deal with these interactions. You know up front if someone is playing with certain cards, they're planning on winning with a combo, and you can play with that in mind. In Commander, there are far more variables, and you're usually playing to the board. If a player's plan is to not interact very much until they play a specific two or three card combination that wins the game outright without them ever presenting as a threat, it becomes correct to just destroy people when they look like they are struggling to just play the game. This can result in a lot of feels bad for everybody. If it becomes correct at your tables to just gang up on whoever is struggling because they may combo out, that ends up creating some pretty uninteresting games. Also, and maybe this is just me, as the combo player, how's it fun to not interact with the game at large, pretend like no one should worry about you, and then just end the game? That reminds me of something. Wouldn't get a guy with glasses, huh, would you? Time management. I touched on this a little in a previous segment with a few decks that are notorious for it, but time management is important. The most enjoyable part of any commander game is when it's your turn. The more quickly the game is played, the more often everyone gets to participate, and the more games you get to play. Don't be that guy who starts telling a hilarious anecdote while you have priority. Don't be playing on your phone when you should be interacting with your table, unless it's super important. All this being said, of course this is a social game, first and foremost. So I'm not saying to just play like a robot and not talk or joke around. Just be aware of when it's stopping the game and mindful of everybody else's enjoyment. Avoiding overly competitive behavior. Commander is not competitive magic. It's just not. It's still a game you're trying to compete in and win, but that should not be your top priority. It's fine if it's a close number two. I know it is for me. But making sure everyone walks away having enjoyed the experience as much as possible, despite the results, should be your number one priority. There are certain behaviors that are necessary, or at least very common in tournaments, that are not welcome here. For example, I personally will allow players to take back game actions that were a result of them misunderstanding the rules, if it's within reason. If someone accidentally looks at the top card of their deck, or draws two cards by mistake, this is not going to result in anything other than the table deciding if they should leave it there, or put it on the bottom of their library. If someone blocks something, not realizing that you have first strike, I let them take it back. In short, I allow people to play how they are intending to play, and pointing out when that isn't actually the case, with a smile and the option to change their play. And pointing out when this isn't actually the case with a smile and the option to take it back. Provided it hasn't caused some hidden information to be revealed, but even then, it's still usually fine. Sometimes in these games, a friendly grudge makes for a fun dynamic between two players. Letting two boneheads slug it out while you just watch is a ton of fun, but sometimes players are actually hostile towards each other, and that's not okay. I personally try to avoid playing with these players if they seem like they can't be reasoned with or are unaware of the perception of their behavior. Trying to talk to them about it should be your first course of action, but if someone just doesn't fit the vibe of the group, it's okay to not want to play with them. And vice versa, if you don't fit the vibe of the pod, it's fine to keep looking for other people to play with. If someone is knowingly bringing a deck to a table that far outclasses everyone else, aka pub stomping, it's worth asking them if they have something more in line with what everyone else is doing at the table. Or offering them one of your decks that plays better with the group. Or at last line in defense, asking them if they can find a different table. None of these situations are clear cut or easy to navigate and they mirror plenty of other social dynamics in the world at large. There isn't some magic bullet answer to this issue, and I think it stems largely from the vast gulf of power level in Commander decks, and the inability to communicate that accurately. What I would say is once you find a group of like-minded Commander players, stick with them. Don't close off your group and become isolated. 
try to expand it as often as you can. Once you have a small community all on the same page, then you can stop spending so much time finding games and start playing the type of games you like to play and really have some fun. Graceful winners and losers. Commander is a game of politics, maybe even more than strategy. You shouldn't expect to win even 50% of your games, even if you are the best player at the table. Being a gracious winner or loser is important. Try to stay a little bit engaged in the game, even after you've lost. Don't salt off on whoever took you out. On the flip side of the coin, don't gloat or act like your win was inevitable. Compliment your opponent's decks, best plays, or recant tale of the game's most glorious battle. The real goal of Commander is to make friends and have a good time. The actual results? They're secondary. Presenting house rules. There are a number of house rules I really enjoy in Commander that I think make the game better. If I know the players or decks, I feel more comfortable suggesting them. After the first game especially, I'll often say something like, in my normal playgroup, we like to do X, Y, and Z. Do any of you do that? Any interest in trying it? If people aren't enthusiastic about it, I don't push it. Some people like to spice it up a little, some don't. Here are a few rules I like to suggest. I've heard this called the Boston Mulligan, but I don't know if that's its official name. Each player starts the game by drawing 10 cards instead of 7, and you put 3 back on the bottom. This helps cut down on mulliganing time, and also makes it more likely that each player has a playable hand. One of the pitfalls of this style of mulliganing, though, is that it does tend to reward greedier deck building. So it's best if people aren't building their decks with this in mind. I also prefer to just not track commander damage if no one's trying to abuse that rule. I don't like commander damage. It's just another thing to keep track of. A lot of these apps, it's a little confusing, too. And often enough, people miss it or forget about it. What are some of the house rules you like? Drop me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear a few more. So to sum it up, have fun and be nice. The real point of playing this format is to be social and to make friends. We did it, you guys. The real treasure was the friends we made along the way. Subscribe or die.